Hello, this is Tom Carhill. Um, it's Tuesday, the 19th of January, 2016. Um, this is a little update. Um, um, I'm going to do a couple of updates on a couple of people who um, are continuing to try and hang in there as sort of active, as in public-facing counterintelligence operatives. Um, and somebody just uh, drew my attention to this. This is Michael Dougherty. He's a stooge for Ian Puddick. And um, all the time I'm actually working... At, I believe Vets for Pets Buckingham, but it was definitely Vets for Pets as a manager. I believe his wife owns Vets for Pets or that, that you know franchise or whatever it is. I looked up in companies that has quite a few different Vets for Pets, but lots of them are registered in the same place and it's somewhere not in the southeast. I forget. Anyway, anyway, um, but if you see here, it says <coughs> Michael Dougherty, Just Law. No S in just law, it's a five instead of an S. Notice, he, he always puts like numbers instead of letters all the time. That's one thing you can tell because like Vets for Pets has got a four, the number four and stuff like that. Anyway, and also he's got like Campaign for Justice was his fraudulent, what he would purport to be a charity website. All of these counterintelligence operatives pretend to be running kind of charities, have donation buttons on their sites. Uh, and all the time... It turns out they're not just, you know, you know, just like a fighting a good fight on the dole 100% of the time, you know, fighting a good fight. They're not actually doing that. What they're actually doing is working and they're taking money on the side, which is when he, which is why, sorry, when he said about his £4 million donation on Facebook, then took it down the next day. I don't know why he did that. I mean, that might just be some kind of little trick to see who's paying attention, but he did, I definitely did see that. So that went into a limited company. And if you look it up in Company's House, it's not trading, it was dissolved with no accounts filed, so um, he's either a liar and he didn't get £4 million, I don't think he probably did, but, you know, somebody's taken over his Facebook and put it up there, or, um, which I don't think has happened, or, you know, he's actually getting paid via that limited company. The limited company, by the way, was in the same building it was registered not to a house address. He's very keen that nobody finds out his house address, right? And I think the reason for this is suspicious because let's say somebody says to you, um, uh, can I see what you put into the court? He doesn't want to see it because he kind of, and he's, he always blocks his house address out. Now, why would he want to block his house address out if he's saying he's an anti-police corruption activist? Because as he always says, they know where you live anyway. The police could just look it up just like that. So it doesn't make any sense. The general public... There's not too many people in the general public who are going to come around your house and like do you some harm because you're dealing with something to do with police corruption. So that's that's what that's related to. And um, But this is the big thing here. Look, he's saying that he's a licensed aircraft engineer. Uh, maybe he is. I don't know. He's saying he's a lawyer, a journalist, a parliamentary candidate, and he's got something to do with civil liberty. But he's not a lawyer. He's not article, he hasn't been to the bar, you know, he's not a barrister, he's not a solicitor, he's definitely not a journalist. Um, no, Bill, 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 Baloney, Bill Maloney, he says he's a journalist and a filmmaker. They make up these ridiculous claims and he says he's got a press pass and he doesn't have one and he said he won a film award and he didn't win it and they never heard of him at the New York Film Festival and um, where he said he got it. And you've got to remember also that Bill Maloney doesn't actually know how to use a video camera either, which has been reported by numerous people. You know, this is, I mean, I know it's hearsay me saying it, but different people have independently said so I couldn't believe he couldn't even, use, didn't even know how to use the camera. And he was doing stupid things like um, sitting out of shots. We, you know, someone set the camera up and he'd go and sit down and it wouldn't even be in the shot. He's in a complete moron, you know. So it's like, it's not just, I mean, he should know, you know, like, it's like, you know, not, you know, if you're not experienced with shooting guns, it doesn't mean that you'd go and like, <laughs> you know, set yourself up sitting on a chair halfway down the firing lane between the target and where the guns are, would you? You know, he's, he's a more, you know, he's, he's a more on. He should know which way they point. Um, but anyway, if you say you're a, uh, a lawyer in England and you're not, because lawyers have to have professional indemnity insurance, and if you put yourself out to be a lawyer, that's a that's a crime, right? So I don't actually think he can probably stand for Parliament because that's a criminal act he's done there. And it's published on his um, Twitter, which he uses for all his subversive activity, for all these um, all these perverts he works for. Now, the other thing is, with all these other liars coming out, 
I have seen things in the past. I didn't save them all. Um, well, I didn't save any of them actually. But it looks like his children. Like he's got a daughter from a previous marriage. Who, who this is the one he was saying when she was a teenager, she was being groomed online. Now people have asked him what this grooming meant, and he said it was standard grooming. Uh, now that's what I've heard. He said, and <clears throat> this is the kind of stupid thing people do when they're actually lying. They don't think through their lie. They don't think through the lying story enough. And it's a bit like with um, David Shaler, who works for Ian Puddock as well. And he was staying in the loft area of his business, the sort of upstairs of his business, um, for quite a long time, several months at least in the past. Um, and one of the things he did recently, is he said, Ian Puddock was a formally qualified plumber. Now, there's no such thing as a formally qualified plumber. But you see, this is the thing, is that because they're not thinking about what they're saying, David Shaler and Michael Dogsy are both quite bright. I'd say Shaler's more intelligent than Dogsy, definitely. But you see, they slip up because they haven't thought through the actual implications of what their lies mean, because they're just lying all the time. And this is, you know, you have to be very clever to be a good liar, you know, or no one's clever enough to be a good liar. And um, anyway, so that that's all for today. It looks like uh, Michael Doxy's actually committed a crime here, and therefore he wouldn't be able to stand for Parliament, I don't think. Or maybe you can. Maybe you are allowed if you're a convicted, um, convicted criminal. But either way, if you're actually committing crimes whilst trying to publicise yourself as a parliamentary candidate, I think that would generally preclude you, because you're definitely not a fit and proper person, which we know he isn't, because... It seems very much to me like this story with his daughter getting groomed online is just a complete fabrication like everything else he's done. And I'm, I'm told they're estranged and I've seen snippets of things, as I said, going back a while ago, like postings and stuff. And I don't, I don't think he has anything to do with them. They're, their mother and she, they don't have anything to do with him. And that seems very strange to me because if your dad, even if you didn't like him, if he was sort of dealing with something like you getting groomed online, you would, I mean, it might be different if you were 15 and they were like 20 and, uh, <clears throat> but she was apparently 13 and it was just some random person she didn't even know. So you, you see what I mean? I don't think they would have fallen out over that. I think she would at least be civil to him publicly, you know? Anyway, so as I said, it's Tom Carhill. It's Tuesday, the uh, 19th of January, 2016. Um, I'd like to know what you think. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.